Hi, in this session, we're going to explore about the Metal Platform. The Metal Platform is a skill assessment a platform, okay, or, or you can also say it's a proctoring tool, which is basically used to conduct tests. And it's widely used platform used by several companies to conduct the placement drives. Now we'll just try to explore this, okay, uh, so that we can understand the interface of this. And then along with it, we'll also try to solve a, a simple problem, right? The homepage of this looks something like this, okay, and the website link is test.metal.com. And okay, here we need to specify the test link. The test link would have been given by the uh, company which is giving the test. And then once you enter the test code, you can just click on the go. And then first, it basically gives you some of the guidelines out here. It tells you about what is the internet connectivity required. And then it also tells you about that you are not supposed to refresh it, okay? And then it tells you that, yeah, okay, it gets saved automatically. At this left side, you can just see, it tells you more information about the test, the name of the test out here, as well as the number of questions, the number of sections, as well as the duration, okay? Uh, this platform can be used to uh, test MCQ questions as well as programming. And uh, in a single test, you can also have MCQs as well as programming, right? So in that particular case, okay, if you have MCQ as well as programming in a single test, then the number of sections will be two out here, okay? Uh, I have considered a simple programming uh, question out here. Uh, so that is the reason why the number of questions is only one and then the number of sections is also one and the time duration given is 65 minutes. Just click on this proceed. It's going to check for the system compatibility and once it is fine and it uh, we can Go to the next step where you're supposed to give the email ID. Give the email ID whatever you have given to the companies, right? Let me just try to write sikandar 1234 at gmail.com and then um, Muhammad, right? And I'll try to submit this, right? Okay. So you can also take a guided tour of this particular platform. It tells you the various sections which are available. Let's quickly take a guided tour out here. It tells you that there are multiple sections and the session on the left, it basically is a question session where you have the in detailed question uh, with also examples like, okay, a question as well as the examples and explanation of that. Then it has a, on the right hand side, basically has a section where you're supposed to write the program. Uh, this platform provides you a uh, multiple languages to for you to solve the program. You can just observe here. Okay, we can select the language of your choice, C, C++, Java, Python and all. And then the editors, we can just select it out here if you want it, fine. This is the coding section. And remember this line number three to line number seven is a read only region, okay? And the function name is specified, the parameter specified, return type specified, we are supposed to write the code in this and then we should return the value. Uh, we don't need to write any main function. And at down, you can just observe here, we basically have this compile and test. Okay, so we can check out if your program is working fine or not. And if it's working fine, then you have the submit button, right? And yeah, this submit button is different when compared to the finish button on the top. Okay, now, Submit button is for every individual program. Once you complete the entire test, you can just click on the finish, right? So if you're not okay with the basic uh, compile and test, and if you want to uh, give a custom input, here we can just uh, check this uh, checkbox and we can give a okay custom input and then check out how does the program behave for the custom input, right? So here you can just observe, we have various languages out here and I'll be using C language as well as later on, I'll also try to solve the same problem using other uh, language, right? Okay, first read the question thoroughly. The questions will never be a straightforward question, what you do it in your college. Okay, let's quickly read this. The title of the question is non-repeated digit count. What does the question say? Write a function to find the count of non-repeated digits in a given number. You're supposed to count the number of non-repeated digits in a given number. It says that the number will be passed to the function as an input parameter of type int. As we can see out here, this is the input parameter which has been specified. And assumption, the input number will be a positive integer between 1 to 25,000. Okay. So this is an assumption. Okay. The number will not be much greater than this. Fine. Uh, here, it also gives you the explanation about this so that you can understand the problem in a much better way. 
It says if the given number is 292, the function should return 1 because there is only one non-repeated digit 9 in this number. But if the number is 1015, the function should return 2 because there are two non-repeated digits in this number, 0 and 5, because 1 is repeated, so 1 should not be considered. 0 is not repeated, 5 is not repeated. So there are two digits which are not repeated. Next number, 108. So 1 is also not repeated, 0 is also not repeated, 8 is also not repeated. So there are three numbers which are not repeated, right? Whereas if the number is 22, it should return 0 because we don't have any digit which is unique, right? Every digit is repeated out here. Fine. Now, once you read the question, think how do you solve it? Don't just get into writing the code instantly, right? Here, we need to find the frequency of every digit and then uh, we need to check out like how many digits do we have with a frequency of 1, right? Uh, this problem can be solved in a very simple way where you just use a simple array to track the number of uh, digits or sorry, digit count of every di uh, digit, right? And uh, they can also use uh, better data structures like for example, if you are working with uh, C++ or Python in C++ or Java, we can basically use a map data structure and Python we can use the uh, dictionary equivalent to the map of C++ and Java. But here I'm trying to solve it using a, a much more easier way uh, or you can say a simpler way, right, where everybody can understand. Uh, here, uh, possible digits what we basically have is 10, right? So we can have 10 digits. So I will try to create an array. I'll try to create an array of 10 elements, fine? Now, what will be the purpose of this particular array? this array will have the frequency count of every digit. Like uh, for 0, how what is the frequency? Okay, for 1, what is the frequency? For 2, then for 3, then for 4, then 5, 6, right? The same way for 7, 8, 9. nine right? Now after that, when I take this number, I start extracting individual digit. Like if I have this 292, 292, you can extract a single digit and it's quite easy to extract the digit from the last. So the last digit is 2. So now once you get the last digit as 2, I will try to change this frequency count of 2 from 0 to 1. Remember initially the frequency or the value of this array will be 0 because the, that is the initial value, right? And as we keep uh, traversing it, we will try to increment the digit count. The next digit, what you basically get it is 9. So when you get 9, so I'll just go to this place and then I'll try to say that, okay, fine, I found one digit of 9. Then, okay, uh, again, the next digit, what I basically get it is 2. So when I get this 2 out here, again, I'll try go to this particular section out here. I will try to update this. I will try to update this from 1 to 2. So now all the digits are over. Now I need to find out how many digits do I have with a frequency of 1. I have only one digit with a frequency of 1. So we need to count the number of 1s in this array and there is only one value okay, with the value 1, of 1 entry with the value 1. So we should return the output as 1. Okay. Now, Let's try to quickly uh, type the program out here. So now, first thing is, as I said, like I'll try to create an array of 10 elements and I need to initialize everything to zero. Okay, initializing an array with zero. Okay, or you can say an array is partially initialized, all the other elements will be set to zero. Fine. Okay, next. I need to repeat this as long as I have any digits in the number. And remember, I don't need to write a code to read the input from the user because the reading of the input is already done and they have given the input as a parameter to a function and the parameter name is input 1 and yes, we cannot edit this line. We cannot edit line number 5 here. Okay, so I need to repeat the loop as long as I have digits in that. So I'll try to extract the last digit. My last digit will be how do I get the last digit? The number, which is by the name input 1 mod 10. That will give me the last digit. Remember, the numbers are basically in decimal format. Right. Then, I okay, now uh, when I got this last digit as 2, I need to go to this array at the index 2. 
So I'll just try to write array of last digit. Okay, I need to increment it. I can use the plus plus operator or I can also use uh, array of last digit equal to array of last digit plus one, right? And once my last digit is uh, okay considered, so I need to remove the last digit so that, okay, I can check out the other digit like 29. Okay, I should remove the last digit. To remove the last digit, remove last digit. So what should I do? Input one divided by 10, okay? I need to capture this back into the input one, okay? Now, this particular okay, code snippet will basically capture the frequency of all the uh, digits. So if you basically wanted to check out the frequency of all the digits, you can write a loop here itself, or you can write a separate function to print this array elements. So I'll just try to print the array elements here. As I have 10 elements, I just try to print this. Okay, I'm just uh, testing this portion. For the time being, okay, remember, we have not completed the entire program. We have just done a partial of it where we have just done the frequency count. We have not, uh, not yet analyzed uh, like how many uh, elements do we have in the array with the value one, right? Or how many digits has the value one. So here, I would like to compile this. I know my test cases will not be passed, but let us see what is the output given, 108. The expected is three and return values two, but please do observe, okay, at zero, this is at the index zero, I got it as one, index one, we got it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, you can just observe, I got it as one, right? That's one of the test cases. The other test cases is two, nine, two, you can just observe, zero, one, two, two, it is occurring uh, two times, and then you can just see nine is occurring one time. Okay, we got this. Now, once we have done this, we need to count the number of ones in that array. So I'll just try to write c equal to zero, run through the array, and if array of i equal to one, increment the counter variable. So you want to print it here, what is the value of c? Right, and then you're supposed to return the value of C, okay? So let's quickly verify this. So you can just see 108, the expected output and the actual output. You can see the value of C was three out here, right? And for this particular case, C is one. Here, if you want, we can always use the print statements for debugging purpose, right? And it will not have any impact on the output because the output is only uh, considered based on the return value. And this is just like a debugging, okay? So once everything is working fine, you can comment this or you can even remove this statement. This statement and this statement was only for um, debugging purpose, okay? So first, again, this is a sample test cases, two test cases. And once you are confident, then you can just click on the submit code and there'll be a set of test cases should be executed and you can just observe all the test cases has passed. So now, if all the test cases has passed, and remember your program, uh, or you can say the test had only one program, and it is done, and then we can click on this finish, right? Once it just tells you that the number of attempts, okay, right? And finally, click on this finish test, and we're going to generate a report. So I hope the concepts were clear. Thank you. This is a report what is generated. Thank you all.